All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about Pascal's law and how it relates to fluid mechanics. So Pascal's law basically states that when pressure is applied to an enclosed fluid, it's going to be transmitted to every portion of the fluid all throughout undiminished and also including the walls of the vessel. So what I have drawn here is a hydraulic lift where we have a piston that we're going to press down on the left and then that's going to cause a force pressing up on the right because we've induced like more pressure into the system. So I have force one here drawn on the left. We're going to apply that and then a resulting force is going to get applied upwards on the other piston because that pressure is going undiminished throughout the entire fluid, including the surface area here at the piston. So in order to figure out what the pressure is that we're causing, we need to know the surface area of the piston. So we're going to call the surface area here A1 and the surface area of the second piston A2. So pressure is just equal to force over area. So we have, let's call it F1 over A1 for the pressure at piston 1, and that's going to equal the pressure at piston 2 as long as they're the same height in this video or in this example. So that's going to equal force 2 over area 2. And so if we know the applied force, force 1, and we're looking for force 2, then we can, through cross multiplication, just rearrange this a little bit and have F2 is just equal to F1 times area 2 divided by area 1. And we're going to get a multiplication factor, which is basically just the ratio of the areas. So let's just assign some numbers to this and work through the problem. So let's say that the applied force is going to be equal to 25 newtons. Uh, the area of the piston, the cross-sectional area at that point of contact here, let's say is just 10 centimeters squared. And then the area two is 250 centimeters squared. So we're looking for what is F2, what's the force going upwards, which is going to be different than the applied force what we've applied on the left-hand side. So we can just plug these numbers into our expression here for F2. And we're going to find that F2 is equal to F1, which is 25 newtons, times this ratio of A2, which is 250 centimeters squared, over 10 centimeters squared. And we're going to find actually that the centimeter squared cancel out and this ratio is just a unitless number. And so 25 newtons times 25, 250 over 10 is equal to 625 newtons. So by using a system of pistons like this with an enclosed fluid, we can get what we call a force multiplier, where basically we're applying 25 newtons of force over here on the small side, but the resultant force coming up um, is actually going to be much greater. And we can use this in a lot of applications like uh, car lifts, any sort of hydraulic lifts or like hydraulic brakes and that sort of thing. So there are a lot of uh, useful real life applications of this. Um, but the thing up here is the pressure that we talked about, pressure is equal to force over area. Um, the pressure here is going to be the same as the pressure over here. The forces are different, but the pressures will be the same. And let's illustrate that here by just kind of working through uh, each side one at a time. So let's take a look at the pressure on side one. Let's call it P1. And this is equal to F1 over A1, the force over the area. So the force was 25 newtons, and the area was 10 centimeters squared. Uh, but we're looking for uh, units of Pascals, which is newtons per meter squared. So we're going to have to convert the centimeter squared. We'll just multiply it by unity, which is um, 10,000. Uh, centimeters squared over one meter squared. This is just the ratio. This this whole thing is just equal to one. Uh, so the centimeters are going to cancel out and we'll be left with newtons per meter squared. And so 25 divided by 10 times 10,000 is going to be 25,000 newtons per meter squared, which is also pascals. Or we can also write this as 25 kilopascals. And we can check the other side for P2. This is just going to equal force two over area two. And we had the force, which was 625 newtons over the area, which was 250 centimeters squared. And again, we have to multiply this by unity to get this into units of meters squared, newtons per meter squared. So we have 10,000 centimeters squared divided by one meter squared. That's just that unity. And when we calculate this, this also gives us 25,000 units of newtons per meter squared, which is actually pascals. And this checks out, this is also 25 kilopascals. 
So at this level of height in the fluid column, assuming they're at the same, uh, we have transmitted basically 25 kilopascals all through the fluid and back up to this point. And that's why we're getting 25 kilopascals pressing up, which divided by the area gives us this force of 625 newtons, which is much greater than the applied force that we've applied.